Some actors you can't help but like. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Paul Rudd pop culture moments. For this list, we're sticking to public appearances and sketches, ignoring full-fledged feature films, so Rudd's memorable movie moments don't apply. Number 10. Would you have sex with Paul Rudd? Billy on the street. Paul and I are going to run around and find out which New Yorkers would like to have sex with the charming and absolutely adorable Paul Rudd. Are you ready, Paul? Billy Eichner's abrasive on-the-street interviews are intentionally irritating, and few actors have been more game than Rudd. Miss for a dollar. Would you have sex with Paul Rudd? Yeah. Yes, here's a dollar. Here, would you have sex with Paul Rudd? Yeah. He played his generally likable self while the premise was laid out. Who would have sex with Paul Rudd, one of the most handsome talents in Hollywood, for the meager price of one dollar? Miss, for a dollar, would you have sex with Paul Rudd? Yes. Yes, thank you, take it. You can have a hug, Paul Rudd? Yes, no, I did yes. not say a hug. Naturally, few refused, but those who did made it all the funnier. Rudd ran alongside him, only enhancing the overt silliness of the premise. It's the kind of playing along that makes you realize that Rudd definitely does not take himself too seriously. Sir, for a dollar, do you want to have sex with Paul Rudd? He's right here. Five dollars. No. Two? No. I can't do it for one. Excuse me, get out of here. Number nine, bloopers, various films. You got it, Jobin. You too, Jobus. Got it, Magooch. Anyone who's sat through a blooper reel knows the typical setup. A bunch of in-jokes between actors and performers blowing lines. Sounds like a planonis. They can start to all feel the same. But with Rudd, it's like he's still performing rather than messing up. Desperate to make cast members crack up while still showing off for the camera as well. Some grub, maybe? Let's make some snake up some beers. I'll snake a beer. I'll snake a brewskin. Cool. I'll snake a brewman. One need only look as far as Wanderlust a film Rudd made with David Wayne, to see the effort the actor puts forth even for an unnecessary laugh track. Really, I don't think we're supposed to be in a place where people are hairier than Alec Baldwin's forearms. <laughs> Many apologies, Mr. Baldwin. Any film with the actor follows suit, setting up comic gold to roll over the end credits. Number eight, Mall Blub. Late Night with Seth Meyers. Last night, I am sitting in my apartment uh, with my wife watching television. <laughs> We've covered how funny Rudd is when he's just being himself, but what about when he's in character? Paul, is that just you and a mustache, buddy? <laughs> Hell no, dude. <laughs> I wish I was Paul Rudd, with his handsome face and his huge elephant pee-pee. <laughs> well, we got a glimpse when the actor, disguised with a conspicuous mustache, showed up in the audience on Seth Meyers. Clad in a sleeveless shirt and a baseball cap, he demanded that the host bring out Paul Rudd, right, everyone? <laughs> Myers called out his disguise immediately, but rather than own up to it, Rudd used the homonymous, albeit nonsensical, Mall Blub. Mall Blub is the best <laughs> fake name you could come up with. It's one in a long line of examples proving there's little that Rudd takes seriously. No, I mean, I mean, he's gonna. I mean, out. He. Oh. Um. Oh. Number seven, Rudd and Corden's inappropriate kids duo. The Late Late Show with James Corden. Yeah, we're gonna be the biggest thing that the world of children's music had ever seen. Anyone who's seen role models has seen Paul Rudd behave inappropriately around children. But the television version is equally funny, with the actor and James Corden forming the fictional band Naptime Boys. You gotta roll those dice, you gotta brush those teeth, you gotta plunge that sink, you gotta use those keys, it's a very busy day. The two create songs that may sound innocent at first, save for unintentionally risque dance moves that, well, they change everything. But the silly seesaw don't go up and down, it goes back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth. Hmm, maybe 93% of communication really is nonverbal. It's one of the numerous pairings that Rudd has had with other funny men that pays off with big laughs. Rudd's complete obliviousness towards why the duo never saw success is a highlight. Our show had the fastest cancellation in television history. Mr. Rogers said that if we ever showed our faces at PBS again, he would personally kick our asses. Number six, derailing an interview. Press tour for I Love You Man. I got very surprised surprised because I thought, this seems like an obvious story and I couldn't think of a, a movie that had uh, told it mm -hmm. quite this way. And, Midnight uh, Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy would be the, uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, Urban Cowboy. Uh, yeah, and Rhinestone Cowboy. And Rhinestone. And Stonehenge. And Romancing the Stone. Wow. Go on. 
Press junkets can be unbearable experiences for actors and directors alike, each tasked with answering the same questions hundreds of times. But to upset the norm, friends and co-stars Jason Segel and Paul Rudd decided to flip the switch on what otherwise would have been an intolerable interview when they were forced to repeat sentiments they'd given over and over again. I like it that you're really laughing and now you can't like, stop. I'm just hungry. <laughs> Taking their cue from the nature of their bro comedy, I Love You Man, the two just started messing around, turning what was just another interview into a whole lot of fun. No! No! I'm coming! No! Gideon! I'm coming! No! Gideon! Gideon! No! Number 5. Steve Carell Interview. Unscripted. Can you create a scene from the movie in the original French language? Oui. John Stewart and Dennis Leary, Stephen Colbert and Amy Sedaris. Sometimes you can just tell when two comedy legends like and respect each other. As a result, they usually start high school style ribbing. Give me a T. T. Give me an I. I. Give me an O. O. Give me an N. N. What play is that from? Hamlet! That was the case when Steve Carell sat down with Rudd for an episode of Movie Phone's web series Unscripted. Though little is actually revealed about their movie Dinner for Schmucks, there are plenty of laughs to be had on both sides of the camera, as the two focus more on having a good time than on actually putting together a legitimate interview. That... You know the only way to cure that? No. Happy face dancing. Oh. You want me to give you a beat? <laughs> nope. Okay. Number four, Celery Man. Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. Good morning, Paul. What will your first sequence of the day be? Computer load up, Celery Man, please. Yes, Paul. Throughout the years of constant mugging for the camera, teasing the press, and generally just being awesome, few of Paul Rudd's moves have become more iconic than his goofy white guy dance. Add sequence oyster. It appears in countless films, talk show interviews, and perhaps most notably in Tim Heidecker's and Eric Wareheim show, in which he does web searches for himself doing the dance on repeat. The surreal Adult Swim show, which has seen its fair share of celebrities poking fun at themselves, could not have put his wacky dance moves to better use. Is there any way to generate a nude tane? Not computing. Please repeat. Nude tane. This is not suitable for work. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, s***. Number three, Hot Ones appearance. Hot Ones. What do you make of the Ant-Man kills Thanos by crawling up his butt meme? I consider it a, a lost opportunity. <laughs> the premise for the web series Hot Ones is a simple one. Celebrities eat increasingly hot wings while being interviewed. And there are few better places for Paul Rudd to turn on the charm and wit. Too big of a cauliflower piece. I was gonna say, that looked like a softball that you just put in your mouth. It feels like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's harder, the sauce or the whole thing. Initially, he expresses trepidation about the plutonium he's about to consume. But he handles himself well, despite eating some of the hottest sauces known to man, showing just how well he can acquit himself even in trying times. Have I let you down because I haven't gone for that? No, if anything, you're setting a really high bar. There really appears to be nothing that phases him, at least not enough to stymie his trademark charisma. Breathe in through your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, ah, it's like breathing in dry ice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Number two, owning Jimmy Fallon in a lip sync battle. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. And it's by uh, living legend Tina Turner. <laughs> it's called You Better Be Good to Me. <laughs> the concept of the lip sync battle may have originated on Jimmy Fallon, but it's since grown into its own half hour show. And Few guests have fared better against the original host than Paul Rudd, his first competitor, who destroys Fallon with his ability to lip sync to Tina Turner's You Better Be Good To Me. Rudd not only brings his own moves to the song, he also mimics Turner to a T. Many have tried to top it since, but few, if any, have. I can see the winner right there! Paul Rudd right there! The champ! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Mac and Me, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. And I actually um, brought a clip 
Um, from the final episode? From the final episode. They're it, not supposed it, to, I mean, that, that's on total lockdown. No one's supposed to see that. Right, I know, but no one told me that. It's the most indelible Ruddy and talk show moment in history. So much so that he's done it numerous times. A standard talk show guest answers questions about whatever they're promoting, makes the odd joke, and exits stage right. But for years, Paul Rudd has been punking host Conan O'Brien with specific clips. Let's show this clip from the final episode of Friends. Instead of showing some footage from his latest project, as promised, Rudd has been running a clip from the E.T. knockoff Mac and Me. Even now, when both you and the host are expecting it, it still gets a laugh. But I've been, I, I didn't see that coming, I have to say. No, I know. There's didn't a lot, see it going that way. There's a lot of surprises in the last episode. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.